Good afternoon. Dear members and friends of EGU, welcome to the 2019 EGU Award Ceremony. We are here tonight to honor our medalists and awardees, their outstanding achievements throughout their career, and their um, families and friends are also here. So an extra warm welcome to our awardees and medalists. Um, it's a pleasure to have you here tonight. For the opening of this award ceremony, please welcome, together with me on stage, the EGU president, Alberto Montanari. Dear researchers, students, colleagues, friends, 
It's uh, a great privilege for me today to chair the 2019 award ceremony of uh, EGU. This is perhaps uh, the most exciting event uh, of this uh, scientific week. And I would say that it's also one of the most important because uh, tonight we are celebrating the achievements of eminent scientists. Above all, we are celebrating the achievement of science and the future achievements that I am sure these scientists, and in particular the younger one, will make in the future. We know that the, the successful progress of Earth, planetary and space sciences is essential for ensuring sustainable, a sustainable future to modern society and therefore humanity as a whole. Our community is committed to contribute to the solution of global challenges. And therefore, any step forward of, uh, in terms of scientific research should be properly communi communicated. And celebration is uh, a very effective way to communicate. In fact, the persons that we are awarding today will be the future ambassadors of uh, our scientific community and EGO in particular. We are today electing role models, uh, and we are looking forward to their continual, continual success and their effort to education. Indeed, EGU, uh, I am convinced, is making uh, an effort to ensure diversity and the quality of opportunity in all of its initiatives. Therefore, today we will see on stage scientists representing a diversity of communities and a diversity of fields. So, also for this reason, I think this is uh, an important night, uh, an important way of uh, delivering visibility to our community and the efforts that our community is putting forward for the progress of humanity and uh, for the mitigation of the great uh, risks that humanity is facing today and in the near future. I hope you enjoy this evening uh, and uh, we will be excited to celebrate with us our best scientists. Thank you very much. And please welcome on stage the EGU Vice President, Jonathan Bamba. <laughs> well done. So we start first with a new award, and it's the EGU Public Engagement Grants. The EGU Public Engagement Grant Scheme aims to celebrate and recognize excellent science communication in the Earth, planetary, and space science. The EGU Public Engagement Grants are awarded to EGU members interested in developing an outreach project that intends to raise awareness of geosciences outside the scientific community. Please applaud for Philip Heron for his project entitled Think Like a Scientist. And please applaud for Astrid Hayung, Romana Hödel, Katrin Attermeyer and Laura Colson for their project entitled Biogeocaching, a scavenger hunt for the treasures of biology around Lake Lunds. And it's also our pleasure to present a fellowship, the EGU Science Journalism Fellowship, which is also given the first time this year. The Science Journalism Fellowship is open to professional journalists interested in geoscience stories and enables reporters to follow scientists on location to report on ongoing research in the Earth, planetary or space sciences. Please applaud for Virginia Jivan for her proposal entitled Will Peatland Restoration Efforts Rein in Europe's Carbon Emissions? <laughs> and Catherine Cornay for her proposal entitled Talking to the Pulse of an Extreme Landscape. And last but not least, Martha Henrique for her proposal entitled The Forgotten Legacy of Europe's Abandoned Uranium Mines. Dear members and friends of EGU, it is now our great pleasure to honoring our EGU 
Division Medalist 2019 for their outstanding achievements in the various disciplines presented or represented by EGU's divisions. The actual presentation of these medals takes place during the individual medal lectures throughout the week. Today, we are here to call them on stage, all together representing the unity of geosciences. Dear 2019 division medalists, please come on stage while I am reading your name and citation. Please applaud for Anne de Weil, Augustus Love Medal, for innovative experiments and analysis in fluid mechanics which have created a new understanding on convective regimes within the mantles of the Earth and other planets and of their magnetic systems. Annie Suryo, Beno Gutenberg Medal, in recognition of outstanding contributions to seismological studies of the Earth's inner and outer cores. Lev Eppelbaum, Christian Huygens Medal, for outstanding work that has led to significant progress in geology and geophysics with special emphasis on the development of new methods for the analysis of magnetic, thermal, and gravity data. Anne-Marie Trigier, Fritjof Nansen Medal, for leading contributions to the numerical modeling of the eddying ocean from the global to the regional scale, and for crucially advancing the understanding of the influence of mesoscale eddies. Daniel Baker, Hannes Alfen Medal, for outstanding multi-phase contributions to the near-Earth space plasma environment research and predictions, Earth radiation belt environment monitoring, and planetary space plasma studies. Edward Brook, Hans Oeschger Medal, for producing greenhouse gas records from polar ice cores and unprecedented resolution that permitted the precise north-south synchronization of climate signals and the identification of past variations in great detail. Petra Döll, Henri da Sea Medal for groundbreaking work in global freshwater system modeling, increasing awareness of threats to freshwater resources in the world, and contributions to participatory water management. Stefano Nativi, Ian McHark Medal for outstanding contributions to international earth science informatics through enabling interoperability of disparate data types, thus laying the foundations for global interdisciplinary science. Isabel Montagnes, Jean-Baptiste Lamarck Medal, for major contributions to the field of stratigraphy, in particular through the application of sedimentary geochemistry to address paleoclimate and sequence stratigraphic concepts in deep time. Günther Blöschel, John Dalton Medal, for pioneering major advances in hydrological predictions, including advances in flood estimations by linking patterns and processes across small catchments to large regional scales. Masatoshi Yamaoshi, Julius Bartels Medal for extraordinary work in space physics and planetary science. Welcome on stage. Sean Lovejoy, Louis Fry Richards Medal for pioneering and leading research on multifractal cascade dynamics in hydrology, climate, and weather, leading to a new class of comprehensive stochastic rather than deterministic subgrid models. Andreas Keep, Louis Agassiz Medal for innovative and multidisciplinary contributions to the field of remote sensing to the cryosphere with applications in glacial mass balance, permafrost, and geohazards. Chris Maroney, a Louis Neal Medal for seminal contributions to the understanding of fault mechanisms and earthquake generating processes and for innovation in experimental techniques and apparatus development. Jacques Lascar, Milutin Milankovic Medal for fundamental contributions to the investigation of orbital climate forcing and for the development of long-term reliable astronomical solutions important for the whole paleoclimate community. Kathrin Kessel, Petrus Peregrinus Medal for outstanding contributions in paleomagnetism applied to understanding the Earth's magnetic field, paleoclimate, paleoceanography, and the geodynamic evolution of the Mediterranean margins. Claire Chenu, 
Philippe de Chiffour Medal for outstanding research in the field of soil science with special emphasis on pioneering conceptual work on the microbial mineral interactions and organic metadynamics in soil. Philip Ward Plinius Medal for outstanding research on flood and drought risk assessments from global to local scales. David Eckholm, Ralf Alger Bagnold Medal for shaping our thinking about glacial landscape evolution by effectively addressing many topical big chicta problems through the judicious use of numerical models. Daniela Rubato, Robert Wilhelm Bunsen Medal in recognition of fundamental and far-reaching accomplishments in metamorphic petrology, mineralogy, geochronology, and tectonics. Tim van Holst, Rankorn Frolensky Medal for seminal contributions to the geodesy and geophysics of the terrestrial planets and satellites and for leadership in planetary geodesy. Georgi Sasa, Sergei Soloviev Medal for outstanding scientific contributions in fundamental research in landslide hazards and in landslide risk reduction initiatives for the benefit of society. Serge Lallemand, Stefan Müller Medal for fundamental analysis of the tectonics of the convergent plate margins through careful combinations of natural observations with experiments. Tony Van Dam, Wenning Minus Medal for pioneering work on the deformations of the solid earth under a variety of surface loads and on their measurements using space geodetic observation techniques. Johannes Leliville. Uh, Wilhelm Bjergnes Medal for eminent and diverse scientific contributions and international leadership in atmospheric research in the Earth system approach, including pioneering studies linking air pollution with health. And last but not least, Kurt Kornhauser, Vladimir Ivanovich Schwenetsky Medal for seminal contributions to biogeosciences, in particular for exploring the role of microorganisms in mineral precipitation. Thank you very much. Maybe we can bring you a bit together. But no, no, I shouldn't be here. Next year, larger stage. Thank you. We are now awarding the Alfred Wegener Medal and Honorary Membership for exceptional international standing and achievements in atmospheric, hydrological, or ocean sciences. It is my pleasure to welcome on stage the 2019 medalist Michael Bender. On union level, we award outstanding early career scientist with the Arne Richter Award. Please welcome the 2019 awardees Amanda Maycock and Marie Dumont. The EGU is strongly driven by the continuous exchange and interaction between early career scientists and senior scientists. Since our union medalists are role models for the younger generation, we would like to take the opportunity tonight of honoring both together. On division level, early career scientists are awarded with the so-called EGU Division Outstanding Early Career Scientist Award. I herewith would like to call those awardees on stage honored together with the Alfred Wegener Medal. 
Please applaud for Gabriele Messori, Atmospheric Sciences. Serena Seola, Hydrological Sciences. Jadranka Cevich, Natural Hazards. And Peter Landschützer, Ocean Sciences. Thank you very much. Please take a seat. Gunnar Mühre is kindly delivering the citation for Amanda Maycock. Gunnar, please come on stage. I have the pleasure on behalf of the main nominator, Martin Chipperfield, and several who uh, nominators to summarize, summarize briefly the background of the highly deserved uh, uh, award for Dr. Amanda Maycock. Uh, Amanda's research, research has made significant uh, contributions to climate science, particularly in the field of chemistry, climate processes in the stratosphere, and important understanding for global warming and future predictions. Her work demonstrates new mechanism, mechanisms for the uh, impact of stratospheric water, water vapor trends on climate through building fundamental understanding of the effect of atmospheric temperature and coupling to the global circulation. Uh, she has been strongly involved in the discovery of a new climate feedback mechanism associated with changes in the transport of ozone due to increase in the stratospheric circulation under global warming. Amanda's work also includes the importance of solar changes for climate changes and understanding stratospheric temperature trends. Amanda finished her PhD in 2012 at the University of Reading. Uh, she was promoted to an associate professor uh, at the University of Leeds just five years after that. Uh, before that, she had several prestigious independent research fellowships and was at both uh, Oxford and Cambridge. She was a lead author for the uh, World Meteorological Organization 2018 Ozone Assessment Report on Stratospheric Ozone and Climate. And she has been selected as a lead author for the upcoming uh, IPCC Sixth Assessment Report and on the chapter on future climate change. She has leadership uh, role in several activities such as SPARC, CIMIP-6, and US CLIVAR. And some of these leaderships uh, role that's uh, based on the, the scientific uh, publications, but also she is very active at scientific meetings and has an extraordinary uh, broad scientific overview for an early career scientist. Uh, recently, she got um, um, another prize, and that was Philip Leverhulme's prize, uh, prestigious and also funding to, to research. And the criteria for that prize is also um, very well described by she deserved this uh, EGU prize. That was, the criteria was for researchers at an early stage of their careers whose work has had international impact and whose future research careers is exceptional promising. Thank you very much. <laughs> Amanda Maycock has presented the Arne Richter Outstanding Early Career Scientist Award.
Well, good afternoon, everybody. Um, thank you very much for coming. Of course, it's a tremendous uh, honour to be awarded the Arnie Richter uh, Prize for Outstanding Early Career Scientists. Um, I'd like to start by thanking Gunnar for this very kind citation and also my other colleagues for the nomination, um, Martin Chipperfield, um, uh, Katia Matters, Keith Shine, um, David Fahey, uh, John Pyle and Joanna Haig. Um, I've been extremely fortunate so far in my career to work with some um, inspirational colleagues and mentors, um, particularly my PhD supervisors at the University of Reading, um, Professors Keith Shine, Manoj Joshi and Adam Scaife. Um, they were fantastic to work with and really set me off on a, uh, on a trajectory for, to have a passion for re research and science. Um, working at the University of Cambridge with John Pyle, um, I was very fortunate there to be given opportunities, for example, to become involved with the um, WMO Ozone Assessment Reports, which was a, a fantastic experience. So um, I won't stay on here for very long, but um, I would just say again that, that uh, thank you very much for the, the award, and uh, I'm very lucky to get to do something every day that I really enjoy and am very passionate about. So thank you. <clears throat> Etienne Pertier is kindly delivering the citation for Marie Dumont. Etienne, please enter the stage. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, on behalf of our nomination team, made of Thomas Painter, Eric Brun, Gislain Picard, and Samuel Morin, I'm delighted to present Marie Dumont from Meteo France. Uh, when we think of snow, most of us in this room will probably imagine a medium with a uniform and maybe boring color, which is white. However, Mary's scientific achievements are contributing to draw a totally different vision of it. As she will present tomorrow, um, when Mary is not running the Vienna Marathon, like last Sunday, she works hard to measure and model many different colors of snow. This is something I admire in her work, uh, not the least because I'm colorblind. <laughs> so studying the color of snow, in particular how albedo is evolving, is central to Mary's work and is of great importance in the context of climate change, as it controls both the Earth's energy and water balance and is key for monitoring and forecasting water uh, availability. For all of these, congratulations, Mary. Marie Dumont is presented the Arne Richter Outstanding Early Career Scientist Award. Thanks, Etienne, for his nice citation. You kept your promises of not being nasty with me <laughs> during this talk. Um, thanks for all for being here. Um, so first of all, I'm just deeply honored of receiving this award today. I'm grateful to EGU and EGU Award Committee for selecting my name for that. I'm infinitely grateful to Etienne and the four authors um, for supporting my nomination to this medal with quite some obscenity because they supported my name three years <laughs> in a row. I, just the fact that uh, you thought I may get it, it's an enormous gift to me, almost as much as the medal itself. I'm grateful to my kids and family for letting me work a bit too much from time to time. And uh, when I received the email from AGU uh, with a notification of me getting this award, I was, of course, first super happy and just jumping everywhere. But after a few hours, uh, I was just severely depressed because it triggered too much question. Why me? Is it because I'm a woman? Is my work any useful for something? And of course, there is no answer to that. I couldn't find any. And the one I'm comfortable with now is just the fact that 
I think there are many worthy recipients of such awards anywhere in this room, at EGU, and in any research lab in the world. And for some mixed reason, and also a bit by chance, the, ch the light is shed on me now. And that's a light that I would like to share with all my co-workers, with all the people I'm lucky to work with, with my students, with my research team. Because without them, there won't be any paper, any work, any medal, so that's not only my medal, it's also theirs. Thanks. Thomas Blunier is kindly delivering the citation for Michael Bender. Thomas, please enter the stage. Good afternoon, everyone. Michael Bender received his PhD in geology from the Columbia University in 1970, and then he was for 25 years a professor at the Graduate School of Oceanography at the University of Rhode Island, and then followed the call to Princeton in 1997. For me, Michael is the prototype of a curiosity-driven scientist. And for me, unfortunately, his curiosity was driven towards the Earth system. Michael works on all aspects the Alfred Wegener Medal stands for, the ocean, the atmosphere, hydrology, and polar research. In the 1980s, Michael got involved in ice core research and the climate information that can be found in the tiny air bubbles of ice cores. The scientific contribution Michael is probably best known for is related to atmospheric oxygen, the oxygen cycle, the counterpart of the carbon cycle. Among many other things, many other contributions, I want to mention his careful reanalysis of the Dole effect and his introduction of oxygen isotopes of O2 for dating ice. Another one of Michael's initiatives is the use of triple oxygen isotope measurements to estimate terrestrial and oceanographic productivity in the past and the present. And I suspect that Michael's talk on Friday has something to do with that. One of his latest innovations is dating of old ice by Argon 40, which is slowly increasing in the atmosphere. As many times before, his fundamental research is pushing science forward. His method will be one important dating tool for the ongoing search for ice older than one million, year old, uh, one million year, years old. Michael's work has been and still is innovative and groundbreaking. Many of his brilliant ideas are now in the hands of his former postdocs and PhDs who continue to produce pioneering results based on his ideas. Michael's advice and constructive criticism is highly worshipped in the community, as can be seen by the many acknowledgments and publications of all kind. Michael is the most considerate and thoughtful of colleagues and the most thorough and careful of intellects. He is deeply respected for his unflagging commit commitment to scientific rigor and personal integrity. Congratulations, Michael, to this well-deserved recognition of your work. Michael Bender has presented the Alfred Wegener Medal and Honorary Membership. start on a sour note, but I have to say that uh, I feel a little awkward being here because I'm not sure that I'm the most deserving one. But anyway, um, I, I want to say a few things about my career. I, as Tomas said, I went to graduate school at Columbia University, 
at Lamont. Uh, Wally Broker was my thesis advisor, and he was an enormous influence on me. Even today, I can trace just about everything I do back to Wally in, in one way or another. And uh, as many of you know, Wally recently died, and he's going to be sorely missed by me and by a lot of people in the community. Um, as you've heard uh, a little bit already, we talk about uh, what, what we've done, but in my case, what that me really means is what the students and postdocs and sabbatical visitors who've worked in my lab have done. And uh, I have a tremendous amount of admiration for these people. Ed Brook uh, is, is, uh, and Tomas were both people who, uh, who worked in, in my lab. Uh, and I feel honored that all these people chose to associate with me. And um, this medal is at least as much for them as it is for me, uh, maybe more. I um, have gotten uh, a lot of uh, comfort throughout the years by being part of the, uh, of the Earth Sciences, Geosciences community. Um, it's a community that has shared values, shared goals, um, and works to help each other, although, of course, we also compete. And um, I really feel grateful for the people I've gotten to work with for all the things they've taught me and for the friendships that have come about through scientific work. Um, my wife and I agreed that uh, I should thank her, but the question came up of what I should thank her for. And the solution was I should thank her for putting up with me. Um, but I uh, am uh, really thrilled that I've gotten to share my life with Yvette. And it's made a difference uh, in, in my science and in all parts of my life. And finally, I, I'd like to say that when I was a graduate student, I pulled out Alfred Wegener's books, or one of his books, about continental drift. And I was a little skeptical uh, because he didn't have a mechanism, so it was incomplete. And upon uh, being notified that I'd received this award, I uh, went back and did some reading about Alfred Wegener and, and his life. And uh, I learned that he was an, primarily an atmospheric physicist. He was a tremendously strong and brave man and died in the field in Greenland, as a matter of fact. And one, one curiosity, uh, according to Patti Smith, who's a great American musician and writer, um, in, she, uh, she joined a group called the Continental Drift Club, which was composed mainly of, of laymen. And uh, they met every year to uh, venerate Wegener and to celebrate continental drift. One year, she was asked to give a speech. And in her poetic imagination, she talked about how Wegener, at the moment of his death, pictured his beloved wife uh, framed by icicles. And at this point in her talk, uh, many of the members got up and started complaining that this wasn't history, this wasn't they, wasn't true, and that was kind of the beginning of the end of the Continental Drift Club. So uh, anyway, uh, thank you very much. We are now awarding the 2019 Arthur Holmes Medal and Honorary Membership. This medal and honorary membership is for exceptional international standing and achievements in solid earth geosciences. It is my pleasure to welcome on stage the 2019 Arthur Holmes Medalist, Jean Braun.
And please welcome on stage the 2019 Arne Richter Awardees for Outstanding Early Career Scientists, Matthew Domeyer and Julia Sophia. And I'm now calling on stage the 2019 EGU Division Outstanding Early Career Scientist Awardees honored together with the Arthur Holmes Medal. Please applaud for Benedict Soya, Geodesy. <laughs> Evangelos Mulas, Geochemistry, Mineralogy, Petrology and Volcanology. Piero Poli, Seismology. Christian Zehn, Stratigraphy, Sedimentology and Paleontology. Baha Rasavi, Soil System Sciences. And Daniel Pastor Galan, Tectonics and Structural Geology. Carmen Geiner is kindly delivering the citation for Matthew Domeyer. Carmen, please enter the stage. Good evening. Matt Domeyer's scientific toil brings us closer to the world as it was hundreds of millions of years ago. He works with exceptional patients to assemble and analyze an enormous amount of information. He used that to construct the first absolute global full plate tectonic model for a period that spanned 160 million years ago, the late Paleozoic. He developed novel methodologies to tackle complex tectonic regions. His ultimate aim is to uncover the link between the evolution of lithospheric plate with the deep earth. As an example, he unraveled the mystery of the famous bend in the Hawaiian emperor volcanic change in the Pacific Ocean by combining paleomagnetism, geology, and seismic tomographic models. Matt is curiosity-driven, exceptionally talented, enthusiastic, creative, a brilliant writer, skilled programmer, ambitious, and very independent. I congratulate Matt Domeyer for his outstanding achievement and the Arne Richter Award. Matt Domeyer has presented the Arne Richter Outstanding Early Career Scientists Award. Thank you, Carmen, for that overly generous citation. Hopefully I can live up to half of that description. Um, I'd like to thank EGU, of course, for this recognition. And just to echo some past recipients of this award, I think it's a really great initiative for, for young scientists. It's really important to honor young scientists to keep us motivated. And also it's a great boost to those of us that are working in uh, non-permanent positions. So thank you very much for that. Um, I'd also, of course, like to say, as I did yesterday during my talk, that my work is very much dependent on the hard work of my colleagues. So this recognition is also a recognition of their hard work. 
I'm very much standing on the shoulders of giants, and actually I feel like I'm surrounded by giants at the University of Oslo. I'm only 168 centimeters tall, so you could take that literally, but I also mean it metaphorically. I'm surrounded by a lot of really brilliant scientists, and I'm particularly lucky that they're very generous with their ideas. So thank you to all of my friends and colleagues um, at SEED. Thank you in particular to Tron Torsvik, who was the original director of SEED, and to Carmen, who's the present director of SEED. They have shown uncanny leadership in putting together um, this wonderful center of very talented and mostly young people. Um, and um, I'd also like to thank my PhD supervisor, Rob Vandervu, for getting me started. And uh, last but certainly not least, I'd like to thank my partner, Nina, who has put up with my unreasonable um, working hours, sometimes obnoxious working hours, and for keeping me grounded and for reminding me of the other important things in life uh, beyond science. But thank you very much. Daniel Parsons is kindly delivering the citations for Julia Sophia. Dan, please enter the stage. Good evening, everyone. Um, it gives me great pleasure to be here in front of you uh, on behalf of the lead nominator, um, Simon Mudd, who unfortunately can't be here, um, to uh, provide the citation for Julia Sophia. Julia is an emerging leader at the forefront of the field of geomorphometry. It's, a growing, it's growing briskly thanks to rapidly evolving tools and techniques um, involving imaging and data analysis. In particular, Sophia has developed cutting edge techniques for understanding geomorphic processes and using those to understand land use history and high resolution topographic data sets that underpin that understanding. She's published very influential work already on feature extraction from channel networks and on the detection of errors and their impact on topographic metrics, and notably from LIDAR data, but also other data sources. And she's also worked on automated detection of floodplains and their, their inherent relief. Her most recent contributions have added substantially to the debate on the impacts of the Anthropocene. Um, crucially, her new methods of identifying agricultural terraces and other anthropogenic impacts on the landscape um, are, are really beginning to first, um, uh, among the first to truly quantify that human impact on that landscape, rather than just offer qualitative um, uh, observations. Sophia's also been a community leader. And, and driving forward the topic of geomorphometry more generally. She's, for example, convened a range of sessions here at EGU over a number of years since 2015. For these reasons, um, Julia Sophia is a very worthy recipient of the 2019 Anna Richter Award, and, and I uh, offer my personal congratulations to her for, for, for the award today. Thank you. Julia Sophia is presented the Arne Richter Outstanding Early Career Scientist Award. I want to thank, first of all, everybody for allowing me to get to this award and to the whole scientific community because that's what's thriving research even for us early career scientists. And I want to thank my family, my husband and my kids for allowing me to move different countries and pursuing career and making every house a home. And I wouldn't be here if it was for the people that I did science with, my research group previously in Italy and my new research group in the States, my mentor Paolo Tarolli that allowed me to understand these things at first when I had no clue of what we were talking about and then to just let me free and do my research on my own time and pace. And of course, I have to thank my mother and father, brother and sister for always being there, even if I moved three different countries and they're now far away from where I am. So thank you. Todd Ehlers is kindly delivering the citation for Jean Brown. Todd, please enter the stage.
Dear ladies and gentlemen, and uh, dear EGU community, uh, it's a great honor for, for me to be here tonight to, uh, to give the laudatio for, uh, for Jean Braun for the 2019 Arthur Holmes Medal. Uh, Jean Braun is currently the section head at, at the Geoforschungszentrum in Potsdam, uh, the section of uh, Earth Surface Process Modeling, and he also has a co-appointment at the University of Potsdam. Prior to that, he was a professor at the University of Grenoble and University of Rennes in France, and prior to that at the Australian National University. Uh, Jean's beginnings go back to Belgium, where he completed a, a master's degree in, in physics, and I'll come back to that a little bit uh, later in my comments here. Before I speak to uh, some of Jean's accomplishments, I just want to give a, a brief background on, the, uh, on Arthur Holmes himself, uh, because Jean's career has relevance to, to what Holmes did as well. Uh, Arthur Holmes was a British geologist, and uh, he's widely known for, for two fundamental contributions that he's made. The first is his applications of radiometric dating, uh, in particular uranium lead dating, and he did this to come up with some of the first robust estimates for the age of the Earth. And those were published around 1950, and then he continued to revise them throughout his career. The second major accomplishment of Arthur Holmes was uh, that he was one of the first Earth scientists to, to grasp the, the thermal and mechanical implications of mantle convection uh, for plate tectonics. And this was particularly important because it was before plate tectonics had been accepted and, and what he had been working on, he was an early believer in continental drift and was developing, uh, trying to develop mechanisms that could explain uh, some of Alfred Wegener's ideas, which we heard about a few minutes ago. So I mention all that because Jean's accomplishments in his career follow in some of these footsteps here. Uh, Jean's research uh, transcends tra traditional disciplinary boundaries, and he's had very seminal papers in the fields of, of geodynamics, structural geology, geomorphology, and, and several others as well. Uh, Jean is widely known as, as a global leader in, in, a, in a couple different areas here. And the first would be in the thermal mechanical modeling of lithospheric processes. And in combination with that, also the numerical modeling of Earth's surface processes, such as glacial erosion and how rivers and hill slope processes uh, produce the topography that we live on today. The second major uh, area that he's known for is in the field of low temperature thermochronology or mineral cooling ages. And Jean, in his spirit of, of kind of robust quantitative analysis of things, has been a leader in the field in terms of trying to uh, extract quantitative information about tectonic and surface processes uh, from this data set. And it's truly revolutionized a whole field of other scientists here. One final key aspect I'll mention about Jean is that in his uh, 140 or greater than 140 publications, he always has a rigorous application of physics and mathematics to the problems that he look at, looks at. And I think these stem from, uh, from his early upbringing in, in physics. So through this uh, kind of quantitative analysis, he's, he's really pushed forward a lot of communities in our tectonics and, and understanding of, of geodynamic and surface processes. One last comment I'll make about Jean is, uh, for those of you that have ever heard him give a talk, as he's talking, he progressively gets more and more excited and more animated. And um, I've often wondered if, if there weren't time limits to talk, what would happen with this positive feedback cycle? So. Um, but his enthusiasm for science is very contagious, and this spills over into his community service as well. Uh, one very admirable aspect of what he does is that he's developing cutting-edge numerical models, but he freely distributes these to the community, and furthermore, offers numerous training sessions and workshops to help the next generation of scientists use these things. He's also uh, been a strong uh, trainer of, of postdocs and, and students with over 12 postdocs and 16 PhD students. And it, it's great to see that he's also uh, training the next generation of scientists in our fields. So please join me in congratulating Jean for this medal. Jean Brown has presented the Arthur Holmes Medal and Honorary Membership.
Many thanks, Todd, for <coughs> your very kind work, words. And I was told I only have two minutes, so you won't see me undressing uh, in that time. I won't get that excited. I, when I finished my undergraduate degrees in, in physics at the University of Liège in Belgium, I was very lucky uh, to then meet with Christopher Bowman at Dalhousie University, who ended up to be my PhD advisor. And he passed to me his enthusiasm for the modeling of geological systems and how models can be used to inspire new ideas and concepts. Throughout my career and at the many institutions I've had the chance to work, I've met many researchers from a great variety of disciplines each and who each in their own way shared with me their passion for a field or a technique they employed. I can only name a few of them. Malcolm Sambridge and Kurt Lambeck at the Australian National University. Peter van der Beek, who's here, I think, today at the University of Grenoble. François Guillauchot and Cécile Robin at the University of Rennes and Frederick Herman, who is now at the University of Lausanne. I must also acknowledge my many colleagues uh, of the Canadian Institute for Advanced Research. It's a great honor for me to receive the Arthur Holmes Medal of the EGU. As you've heard from Todd, Arthur Holmes has made contributions to our basic understanding of how the Earth works and in determining the absolute age of rocks and geological events in Earth's long history. More than ever, large quantities of high-resolution data are now being collected. This provides us with even more insight on Earth's dynamics and how the various systems that compose it interact with each other. This means that we also need to develop more insight, sorry, to develop new methods and algorithms to integrate and interpret this data and to further inspire us in developing new ideas and concepts. This is what I intend to do, and I'm already doing now with the help of a group of enthusiastic young researchers at the GFZ in Potsdam. So please contact me if you are interested in joining us. Many thanks to the EGU, to those who have nominated me, and an enormous thank to my wife, Miriam, who's here and is also a very, very good scientist and tremendous researcher, and to my two wonderful boys, for their support and their love over the last, the past 35 years. Thank you. We are now awarding the 2019 Jean-Dominique Cassini Medal and honorary membership for exceptional international standing and achievements in planetary and space science. Now it's my great pleasure to accompany you when you come on stage. Please welcome on stage the Jean-Dominique Cassini medalist, Margret Kivelsen. And the Jean Dominique Cassini Medal is honored together also with two EGU Division Outstanding Early Career Scientist awardees. So please applaud with me for John Carter, Planetary and Solar System Sciences, and Chao Chiong, Solar Terrestrial Sciences.
Krishan Kurana is kindly delivering dissertation for Margaret Kivissen. Krishan, please enter the stage. It's my great pleasure and privilege to read the citation for Professor Margaret Kivelson. Uh, Margaret Kivelson, a distinguished professor emerita of space physics at UCLA, uh, is a space physicist and a planetary scientist known for her pioneer work on the use of magnetic fields to probe the planetary magnetospheres and the interiors of planetary bodies. She was the principal investigator on the magnetometer instrument on board the Galileo orbiter uh, that acquired data in Jupiter's magnetosphere during 95 to 2003. Margaret Kivelson led the team that unambiguously confirmed the presence of liquid water oceans in Europa, Callisto, and possibly Ganymede, an internal dynamo magnetic field in Ganymede, and a magma ocean in Io. Her most recent collaborations with her, one of the past students, uh, has found a water plume oozing out of Europa. These discoveries have been pivotal in the decisions of both ESA and NASA to mount spacecraft missions to these bodies uh, with missions named Europa Clipper for Europa and JUICE for Ganymede. Many future concepts, uh, such as a Europa lander and a Europa subsurface ocean, are being contemplated uh, for studies of astrobiology and uh, further uh, knowledge of their oceans. The discovery of Ganymede's internal field, the latest planetary dynamo of the solar system, has really revolutionized the field by providing us with yet another end member. So equally home in fundamental theory, observation, and modeling, Margaret has explained the behavior of uh, things as diverse as ultra-low frequency waves in terrestrial magnetosphere, shown how wave-particle interactions occur in magnetohydrodynamic waves, and confirmed the presence of centrifugally driven interchange motions in the magnetosphere of Jupiter. Her role in mentoring a new generation of female scientists in USA and also Europe is legendary. Established planetary scientists such as Professor Fran Bagnell, Professor Imka Departer, Professor Michelle Doherty, and Dr. Rene Pranger trace the success of their scientific careers to her mentoring. Equally impressive is her role in educating a crop of brilliant scientists who are now leaders in research areas as diverse as fusion power, solar coronal heating, heliophysics, planetary science, and exo exoplanet structures. Finally, her influence on space and planetary science policy formulation and particular science institutions uh, should not be underestimated. She has served on more than 100 National Academy of Science, NASA, AGU, ESA, uh, and leader search committees, helping shape the foundations of the space and planetary science enterprise. So I congratulate Margaret on receiving this model, medal she so well deserves. Margaret Kivison is presented the Jean Dominique Cassini Medal and Honorary Membership.
the recipient of this award is supposed to be a towering figure, so I think you can see they've made a mistake. <laughs> okay, so uh, it, am I close enough to the microphone? I'm sure it'll come down. Let's try. Okay, better. Okay, so I'd like to thank EGU, the Medal Committee, Christian, uh, better, yeah, thank you. Christian, Tom Kermegis, David Southwood, uh, and Don Gurnett, who are valued colleagues who nominated me for this prestigious medal. I'm overwhelmed by Christian's generous assessment of my contributions. I can only remind everyone that the kind of physics uh, that we do is a collaborative effort and uh, that the honor of the Cassini Medal is rightly shared with the colleagues and wonderful students who have collaborated with me. Christian and I have been co-authors on more than 100 papers. With David, it is a mere 65. 10 with Don, 10 with Fran, and three with Tom. That's what I mean by collaboration. While working on research problems d described by Christian, I did not anticipate that the work would bring me to this platform today. I was merely trying to make sense of intriguing puzzles and decidedly having fun while doing that. As many of you know, I still think it's fun to play with space physics problems and come up with new ideas that can be explored and often shot down by argumentative colleagues like uh, Christian, David, and Fran. That's why I repeatedly fail retirement. <laughs> In thinking about what to say here, I attribute today's event, event to my having been extraordinarily lucky at every stage of life. I was born into a particularly turbulent world. The famous crash of the US stock market in the early 20th century occurred when I was one year and three days old. By the time I was 10, Hitler had seized power in Germany and Europe, and shortly followed by America, was rushing headlong into World War II. But I lived in a charmed corner of that unhappy world, cosseted by loving parents and entertained by a delightful younger sister, given a fine education and encouraged to succeed in whatever I undertook. My decision to set, attend Radcliffe College, whose classes were Harvard classes, was almost randomly made, but how different my path would have been had I studied elsewhere. In less than a year, I had met an amazing young chemist named Daniel Kivelson and chosen physics as my career. Both events proved important and lucky. Daniel, whom I married after my junior year, believed in me even when I myself was in doubt. Way ahead of his time, he wanted his wife to be a successful scientist. I couldn't have or wouldn't have done much without his help and confidence in me. More luck came a decade or so later when fortune offered me a chance to go into the young field of space plasma physics. At an exciting time, uh, I, uh, at a young institution, UCLA, there I found colleagues who were putting instruments on spacecraft and solving problems that had not existed a decade earlier. What a time to be part of a group that was opening vistas through state-of-the-art instrumentation and advanced data analysis, supported by profound theoretical contributions. Indeed, it was those latter theoretical contributions that, attached, that attracted the attention of a newly minted postdoc David Southwood, who then came to UCLA and it helped initiate a productive collaboration over many decades. 
It, he also intrigued me into a secondary home at Imperial College, his home institution. And that secondary home played a role in my efforts on the cluster mission and the Cassini mission, where I still work closely with David and Michelle Dougherty and her team. My adventures with the Galileo spacecraft would not have been possible without the backing of Paul Coleman and Chris Russell and their remarkable team of engineers, including Bob Snare and Joe Means. And it was also at UCLA that I got the opportunity to work with Ray Walker initially as a student and then on for the rest of our career. And at a critical moment, Christian Karana joined the team and led our collaboration, led our calibration, our induction studies, and a great deal more. I am proud to have facilitated the career, careers of numerous extremely able young students, and we still meet annually with most of them at a luncheon at uh, the fall AGU meeting. Uh, Christian organizes it, and we get together every year and still have a great time interacting. Recently, I've worked closely with Shinja Jha, whom I first encountered as a UCLA student and with whom I have been working at the University of Michigan in a productive and fun collaboration. My final thoughts turn back to my husband, Daniel, my children, Stephen and Valerie, and my grandchildren. I mentioned my good luck, and it worked wonders in the family department. They have all enriched my life, filled it with warmth and happiness, and made it possible for me to be here today to accept this distinguished medal from EGU. Thank you. Dear members and friends of EGU, we thank you very much for your attention tonight. And we also would like, once again, to take the opportunity of congratulating our medalists and awardees. The president of the union is now kindly closing the ceremony. I thank you very much, and I wish you a pleasant evening. Thank you. It's uh, indeed a joyful night. I always feel very inspired by these celebrations. And uh, the inspiration comes from thinking at the numerous ideas, at the commitments, at the passion that animated the, the thousands of careers that are crossing here, convening here at EGU. It's really impressive to think at uh, the efforts that have been dedicated to science, which means uh, society, which means uh, humanity. Now, the celebration, the celebration is not finished because there will be refreshment, but let me say that uh, we scientists are lucky persons because uh, we continue to celebrate every day, because every day we renew our efforts, our commitment, and, and our passion in field experiments, in lab experiments, and in uh, theoretical analysis, education, anything that uh, animates uh, our day-to-day -day life and makes uh, our job uh, really exciting. Thank you very much, and uh, let's continue this uh, exciting evening. Thank you. <laughs>